Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome back to Russia Through Propaganda. We're on day 74, and uh, finally, uh, it's time for celebration. We're adding our last set of uh, case endings, right? So now the instrumental plural, and this will complete our all of our uh, case endings in Russian, right? Uh, I guess the only thing we could possibly add are some, you know, some forms of some unusual noun types. We'll cover that more carefully in uh, book four, uh, but that's kind of a, a, a minor issue, right? In terms of just basic noun endings, uh, and adjective, adjectival endings. We now we've now covered everything, so this is a huge uh, step forward. So uh, look at a poster quickly. All world records should be ours. Okay, so there's a use of the instrumental. The instrumental is maybe a little bit tricky in terms of you know when do we use it, and uh, you may remember one of the maybe trickiest uses is with predicate nouns and adjectives. Right when we have something short of an uh, uh, identity statement, right as I like to say, so a equals a, right? Like I am a student or something. That would be uh, ya student, right? We would get the uh, uh, we would get the predicate noun, right? A student in the nominative. But if we have anything short of that, like I used to be a student, I want to become a student, um, and things like this, right? We get the word student, that predicate noun or predicate adjective in the instrumental, right? So here, the it's not that all world records are ours, right? But they should be ours. They should become ours. We should own all the world records, meaning uh, we Soviet athletes, right? So, recorde, that's nominative plural, должны быть, right? They should be. And then, not наши, but нашими, right? That's the instrumental. Okay, so here are a few more examples quickly to just review, right? Remember the instrumental, the most basic meaning is with instruments, right? We do something with an instrument. Uh, we put that instrument into simply the instrumental case with no preposition, and we have our Russian expression. So, for example, Profesor pishet mielam a my ruchkami. The professor writes with what? Chim. Mielam, right? With chalk, miel. And we write chim, right? With what? Ruchkami with uh, ruchki, right? Now, remember, obviously, we're not using s there. That's what people tend to confuse. Right? Remember, s the preposition, it does take the instrumental, but it means uh, something more like accompaniment, right? So you're going to the movie with your brother, then we use s and we say yachadiov kinos bratam ivodruziami with my brother and his friends. Instrumental. Uh, now, more more of these uh, predicate adjectives, predicate nouns. Remember, when we have something short of identity. So, again, uh, just a straightforward identity statement is something like, he is Russian, right? That's what he is, right? It's not, he doesn't seem Russian, or he's not becoming Russian, or he didn't used to be Russian. That would be an identity statement. Anything short of that in Russian, we could say that there's a very strong tendency to put uh, predicate adverbs, predicate nouns into the instrumental. Uh, so uh, while we can't treat this really as a rule, right, it's, it's, you know, it's not quite that straightforward. It's a very, very strong tendency. Again, as long as we have something short of a straightforward identity statement. Uh, so an, exa- an example, когда мой сын был маленьким. Okay, he's not small anymore, but we're saying back when he used to be small, right? So now we're short of an identity statement. We, he used to be small, but he's not now, right? Uh, so for that reason, we get modding Kim. I should add maybe that when we talk about an identity statement as sort of our standard, that uh, that would be an ide- a statement of identity in the present tense, right? So the idea of tense is also kind of important. It needs to be something that is something in the present as opposed to it used to be something else or it will be something else in the future. No, it is something now. That's a straightforward statement of identity in the present, right? And again, this falls short of that. We have past tense, so we would tend to get the instrumental. And in the second example, on хотел стать президентом США. Okay, there we have a verb of becoming, so that's a no-brainer. That's clearly going to be followed by the instrumental. He wanted to become president, right? So it's not that he is president or even that he was president. It's he wants to become it. So that's, again, very clear. We're going to get instrumental there. Okay, let's review quickly instrumental singular endings. Again, this is all something we've covered, right? Um, uh, oi for adjectives, right? And then we have soft versions of those. And then for nouns here, we have, a, a, this is a bit tricky in the instrumental. We have om, oi. Those are our basic endings for nouns. 
Then we have two soft variations of that, uh, yim, yay, and then if that ending, the soft ending in the instrumental happens to be stressed, we would see yom, yoy. Now let's think about this for a moment. Uh, so what, what would be the true soft variation of om? Well, it would be yom, right? That's really sort of the starting point, right? We just need to soften that uh, begin to begin that same sound om with a y, right? Consonant, and that would give us yom. Or from oi, we would get yoy. Now, the issue in Russian is that if, if those endings are not stressed, we can no longer have the yo, right? So that's really where we get, we, we wind up with the yim, yay, right? As if we have yom or yoy in an unstressed position. Now, again, whether or not it's stressed or unstressed, that would just depend on the particular noun and whatever stress pattern it follows. So we, in theory, we've covered that already. Okay, so let's just run down some basic examples. Stari uh, stari karandash. What if we're writing with an old pen, pencil? Starim karandashom. By the way, that one happens to be in stressed, right? So we get om there. Starim karandashom. Nova ruchka with a new pen instrumental would be novi ruchki. Oi oi. Novi ruchki. Remember that we do have the um, vowel reduction here for unstressed oas and so forth. Okay, now uh, the yo. It appears in soft endings that are stressed, right? Remember, if, if this we have the stressed ending, uh, only in the stressed position can we have yo in the first place. So, for example, with a, a blue dictionary, it would be sinim slavaryom, or with a, a large family, sbarshoy simyoy. But pisatil, that's a soft noun, but the stress is all the way back on the a. Ah. It's not an stressed noun. So basically, we're trying to add yom, but here we get yem instead because uh, the ending is not stressed. So hopefully, at this point, you 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 understand what I'm trying to say, right? Sruskin pisatilim. Okay, uh, what about e nouns? Okay, this is kind of an important exception that we've added just now in this book, right? Uh, e nouns take u and note that we keep the soft side, right? So the spelling is a little bit tricky. Novi titrads with a new uh, notebook would be Snovi titradzu, right? Now, uh, here we're using, si- these are just examples, right? But we could say these things of maybe I saw someone with a new notebook or with a blue dictionary or something. Or again, I went somewhere with my family, right? So hopefully you see why we're using sa here instead of just the instrumental. Okay, at any rate, let's uh, just fill in some blanks. He became my best friend. On stal maim luchim drugam. All right, so there's a verb of becoming, so that's clearly calling for the instrumental. Number two, she became my best friend, here, female friend. Anastala maye luchi padrugi. All right, yay, uh, because of the five letter spelling rule, and then padrugi, right, hard noun. Three, at that film, okay, seeming, right? So becoming, seeming, right? These are situations where clearly we're not stating identity, right? It's it's not that this film is interesting. We could say that, of course, we're, but we're saying instead that the film seems interesting, right? So it's something different that calls for instrumental. At that film, right? Chitiri, are you acquainted with his family? Okay, simya, there in the singular, it's in stressed, so there we we do end up with yoy. Simyoy. Piat, I'm speaking with my uncle and aunt. Okay, so soft uh, nouns. Yagorios dyadye i tyotye. Okay, clearly those aren't in stressed, so we're not going to have yoy, we're going to have yay instead. Dadji Tioti. Shaste, uh we or uh literally they wash dishes with soap, right? So here we've got we have a tool or instrument or means. Pasudu moyut muilam muilam. Okay, now for today's new topic, right? The instrumental plural, and again these are extremely easy. Umi umi right for uh, adjecti- adjectives and ami for nouns and again we have simply soft variants of both of those endings imi yami and so it's just the same picture as we've we've seen the, the past two lessons right novi student okay so let's make that plural and say with new students 
с новыми студентами. So those are just hard. We have a hard adjective, hard noun. Um, with blue dictionaries, okay, here we have a soft adjective and a soft noun. So we need to make take these same endings, make sure we keep them soft. Sinimi slavariami. Now, as again, the past two days, nothing different here. We may see spelling rules that affect what we actually say and write. Uh, right? So it's dragimi vishami. The adjective there is affected by the seven-letter spelling rule and the uh, the noun. You know, again, look at the noun. It is soft. I mean, it, well, it ends in a soft sign, but we can't write ya after sh, right? That's the A-letter spelling rule. Okay, so let's take here some uh, instrumental singulars in the example and then repeat it with making them, making them instrumental plural. Today I had lunch with another student. Я пообедал сегодня с другим студентом. Okay, make that plural, instrumental plural. Я пообедал сегодня с другими студентами. Number two, я иду на вечеринку со знакомым. I'm going to the party with an acquaintance. Okay, that's an adjective, as we know. So the plural form of this adjective would be со знакомыми. Со знакомыми. Three, я ходил в театр с подругой. I went to the theater with a female friend. Okay, plural would be с подругами. С подругами. By the way, if you were thinking с подрузями, remember that подруга is a regular noun. It doesn't, it's not like друг. It doesn't have some wacky form in the plural. So с подругами, hard feminine. Четыре. Я ездил по России с русским другом. I traveled around Russia with a Russian friend. Okay, now this one is irregular, right? С русскими друзьями it'll be. And again, like the past two days, right? Друг in the nominative plural, it's irregular. We get друзья, and we we keep that same form throughout the plural, including here, and we get с друзьями. Пять, uh, I, I was playing with a small child. Я играла с маленьким ребенком. Okay, uh, again, that's an irregular plural. Uh, and here we get an irregular form. Okay, so this is something quite unusual, right? The The... What's the plural of ребенок, child? Дети, right? We've learned that uh, some time ago. Дети means children in the nominative plural. So we would expect the instrumental plural to be, I don't know, с детьми or something. But it's not, right? So here we do have an exception. And there are there are a few, you know, just a handful of nouns that have irregular instrumental cases specifically. Uh, you see there's a footnote there for a couple, right? Anyway, the... The, the instrumental plural for children is детьми, and that's a very common one, of course. Right, so я играла с маленькими детьми. Шесть, I draw with a uh, with pencil, карандашом. Plural would be я рисую карандашами. Семь, я сижу дома с кошкой и собакой. I'm sitting at home with a cat and a dog. Okay, with dog, cats and dogs, plural. С кошками и собаками. Восемь. Что вы делаете с этим словарем? What are you doing with this dictionary? Okay, plural. With these dictionaries. Что вы делаете с этими словарями? That's a soft noun, of course. Uh, девять. У них есть спальня с узкой кроватью. They have a bedroom with a narrow bed. Okay, narrow beds. Let's think for a moment. Кровать. That's soft, of course. Uh, plural would be с узкими кроватями. Uh, десять. Это, это человек с интересной идеей. This is a person with in, an interesting idea. Okay, what if he has multiple interesting ideas? С интересными идеями. Right, идея being a soft feminine. So instrumental plural is идеями. Идеями. Одиннадцать. Это красивый город с большим парком. Okay, it's a pretty city with a big park. Let's give it several parks. С большими парками. Двенадцать. Что вы будете делать с гостем? What will you do with your guest? Okay, plural, that'll be с, uh, с гостями. С гостями. And finally, thirteen. Как, uh, oh, by the way, on, with the plural of гост is гости. So here we do have an unexpected uh, shift. Now, um, we did mention this yesterday, I believe. For some of these soft nouns, the genitive of goist, the genitive plural is gaste, right? And we mentioned how a lot of times that yay ending, not always, but very often it's stressed. 
If that's the case, then generally that stress will carry over to the remaining plural forms. Okay, so basically we, the reason it's gastiami, we could think of that as corresponding to gastie, to the genitive plural stress, and not the nominative plural stress, which would be, would be goisti. Okay, so that's a little bit uh, that's a little bit tricky there, but relatively unusual. Okay, thirteen. Как можно жить с таким человеком? How is it possible to live with such a person? Okay, so here's another word, человек, irregular in the plural. We get люди, as we know. And here on top of that, we have an irregular instrumental specifically, which is людьми. So here, with such people, living with such people would be с такими людьми. Okay, look at a poster. И мы будем летчиками. Uh, right, we too will be pilots, right? And again, the idea is we'll, we will become pilots, obviously. And, um, right, uh, <laughs> anyway, Lyochikemi, right, the, the instrumental plural plural of Lyochik. Okay, uh, let's see, let's look at some uh, plural forms of pronouns and modifiers right here, sort of uh, summarizing, right? Uh, summarizing all the plural forms of both pronouns and, again, special modifiers, which, as we know, they're basically adjectives, but in some cases, some instances, their endings look a little bit funny, right? So we kind of have to make sure we treat them very carefully. If we look across the board here in the plural, we'll see that most of these special modifiers are soft, right? You see e, e, e all over the place, right? Uh, and that's, uh, in some cases, because the stem is inherently soft, like moi or tvoi, or svoy, right? We can see that those are starting off with an e kratkaya. Then if we take nash and vash, well, we could attribute this spelling to the seven-letter spelling rule, right? We can't have u after these forms, even though inherently there's nothing soft about them. That leaves eti, uh, which is unusual, right? Eti is soft in the plural, even though in the singular we have eta, 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 right? So that is unexpected, but we see in the plural, as long as we remember this, this is soft, then these forms make perfect sense. They're actually quite regular. I guess, uh, too, you might want to circle our tia and sia, right? Where you get this ye yeah cropping up. That's somewhat unusual. Of course, these are these are quite common, especially sia, right? Extremely common. And so you might want to circle that and make sure you pay it special attention. Okay, so let's um, just fill in some blanks uh, of pronouns and special modifiers. Number one, uh, where are we with they going tomorrow, right? So this is a idiom, they and they and us, or, um, you know, it's, it's kind of an idiom, right? Uh, we talked about this earlier, meaning like uh, my friend and I, right? Like, uh, drugam, right? Or my friends and I, muistruzyami, right? So this, this we with whoever is just a Russian idiom, and we've talked about it already. Okay, so literally we're saying we with them. Куда мы с ними пойдем завтра? Right, where will we go with them tomorrow, you could say, just translating sort of more and more literally. Okay, number two, they don't want to uh, meet with us anymore. They don't want to get together with us anymore. Okay, so с, we need instrumental plural. Они не хотят больше с нами встречаться. Three, what are we to do with all of these books? Что делать со всеми этими книгами? Okay, there's a there are a couple of tricky ones. Siemi with a ye, and then eti is soft in the plural etimi. Chitiri, they became my best friends. Okay, becoming instrumental plural. Ani stali maimi luchmi druziami. Piat yanya saglasin are not in agreement with your ideas. S again instrumental plural, svashimi idiami. Okay, number six, I'm not uh, acquainted with those people. Я не знакома с теми людьми, с теми людьми. Okay, uh, now let's just do something quickly, right? Most plural endings are really easy. I think that uh, you've probably noticed the past three days, the endings sort of look alike, right? I mean, the only thing that separates them really is basically a consonant. So it sometimes happens that people will see like the ending yam or am, and think, oh, that's prepositional. No, but that's ah, right? So sometimes there is a little bit of confusion, maybe, even though really there shouldn't be. Uh, so let's just take a look at some plural endings and let's name the case. You'll hear this a lot if you order coffee in Russia. They'll ask, with cream or without cream? 
Okay, so the first one is instrumental plural. The second one without cream is genitive plural. Okay, profesor dal studentem po učebniku. The professor gave one textbook apiece to the students. Okay, that's a dative plural, right? Studentem, that's an indirect object, dative plural. Tri ani ochin dobre. They're very kind, they're very nice. They help everyone. Okay, here we have siam. They help all, right? Remember this, this in, in English, everyone is singular, but in Russian, what we're saying is all, meaning in this case, all people. By the way, it could mean any other number of things in the plural, all the books, all cars, all whatever, but it can be used all by itself to mean all people. Siam, that's dative plural. Okay, Chitiria, ya uzhe poznakomila savsiemi, sorry, savsiemi, that's it, that's the sentence. Okay, that's instrumental plural, right? I, I've been acquainted with all, again, meaning with all the people, that is, with everyone. Piat, what do you know about Russian writers? Okay, that's a uh, prepositional plural, right, with ua. Number six, did you forget about us? Have you forgotten about us? Call us tomorrow. Okay, tiyanas zabuil, that's prepositional, right? There's a, this is a pronoun, right? That's the prepositional of my. And then, pozvani uh, zatra, I think I meant to put a nam here, and that would be, so check your book, I'll need, I'll need to fix this typo. Of course, we could say pozvani zatra, but if we supplied an adverb, it would be nam, right? Pozvani nam, because calling in Russian, we end up with the uh, dative. Okay, to wrap things up today, let's look quickly at uh, a topic that this is kind of a specialized topic. You don't see this constantly, but just to cover it, uh, sometimes this raises questions. Do we decline uh, the, the, what about the word monoga, right? What if we want to talk about a lot of whatever, right? Well, we've learned this word already, monoga, which takes the genitive. Now, the tricky part about this is that this is, you know, monoga, it's kind of a shortened form of an adjective we might imagine as being spelled mnogi, mnogi, right? The trick is that that adjective is not used in the nominative singular. It's never used in the nominative singular. And so if we look at our singular column here, we see for the nominative, we would use mnoga, right? Like mnoga, as we've already learned to do, plus the genitive noun, right? So the mnoga there isn't really, it's not modifying a noun. It's, it's instead followed by a noun in the genitive, Right? But in and if we look, but in other forms, basically in all other forms, we do get what look like adjective, the case forms of an adjective mnogi, right? A hard adjective. So mnogava, mnogamu, mnogam, mnogim, right? Just the same case endings we've learned for uh, hard adjectives. Uh, of course, we have some spelling rule issues here also cropping up. What about in the plural? In the plural, in the nominative, we can use mnogia. Right, so you can say things like monogia, meaning many people. Many people do this, many people do that. Or you could also have monoga plus the genitive. So in the plural as well, you often just get monoga substituted for the actual uh, adjectival form. The same thing is also true in the accusative, monoga, right? Uh, but anyway, especially for inanimate nouns, or like uh, I bought a lot of books, for example, or Yakupil Mnoga Knig, right? Instead of Yakupil Mnogia Knigi, right? Okay, but those exceptions aside, right, we can see the, this adjective Mnogia basically declined like a hard adjective. Again, we have the seven letter spelling rule issue cropping up here. Okay, so let's just look at a couple of examples about when, of, of when we would use these truly adjectival forms in place of simply Mnoga. Uh, for example, muy monogamu nauchilis, we've learned a lot. Okay, that's a pretty interesting, pretty simple uh, phrase in English. Remember, this is a very tricky idiom with this verb of learning in Russian. We get the uh, whatever we're learning appearing in the dative, which seems like the opposite of what we'd expect. We've talked about this before. It's very confusing. At any rate, today, we're just pointing out that's how you would say that, monogamu, right? You need the dative version of monoga. Or prepositional, we talked about a lot, monogam, that's the prepositional form of that adjective. Uh, now, another example, many people are saying that it, this is so, that it's true. Okay, that's monogia, that's a uh, nominative plural here, meaning many people. Right, so here we have 
a monoga mod, uh, modifying a noun, right? A, a monogich vaprosach about many matters, about many questions. They help many people. Ani pomagaj mnogim ljudjem. Okay, there we could include the noun, or we could just uh, leave it out, and we would assume we're talking about people. Ani pomagaj mnogim. They help a lot of people. Ja poznakomil se sa mnogimi interesnimi ljudmi. Right, I got acquainted with many interesting people. Instrumental plural. Mui vidili mnogich životnich. Okay, so there, there's an animate uh, noun, so we could... Uh, get that in the, again, what looks like the genitive because of the animacy. Uh, or we could say mnoga životnich there in the accusative. Okay, so let's give just a few examples. The professor was talk, ta- uh, told us uh, about many important Russian writers. So prepositional plural. Profesor raskazal nam a mnogich vajnich ruskich pisatilich. Number two, uh, the life of many of these writers was not very happy. Uh, many of them died young. Жизнь многих из этих писателей была не очень счастливая. Многие из них умерли молодыми. Look at that instrumental, right? They died young. Uh, we could think of that as maybe they died as young or while young. So again, there's maybe a, a, a kind of a use of the instrumental with the predicate adjective that we didn't quite cover earlier, right? It's kind of a different a twist on that same issue. Okay, number three. Moi uh, sasiet, my neighbor, is a person with many problems. Человек со многими проблемами. We, with him, talk about a lot of personal stuff. Okay, stuff, we're getting neuter singular endings here. Мы с ним говорим о многом личном. Chitire, many people don't like this opera, but I really like it. Okay, in Russian we're saying this opera doesn't please many people with the dative. That's going to be mnogim ljudim, or again, simply mnogim. And based on context, we assume we're talking about people. Uh, at the opera, mnogim, mnogim nie nravitsa, mnogim ljudim nie nravitsa, a ja ju ochim ljublju. Okay, we get something similar with skorka, right? Skorka in the plural is, uh, of course, it means several, so it wouldn't really be used in the, it wouldn't make much sense in the singular at all. But in the plural, we say skorka followed by a genitive noun in the nominative or the accusative, again, for inanimates. But elsewhere, we get, again, what look like, dec- well, they are, they're declined forms of this uh, hard adjective. Again, the seven-letter spelling rule is affecting the endings we're actually using. Okay, so for example, Skorko vas bula gastier. How many guests did you have? Uh, okay, but if we want to say with how many guests guests did you manage to speak, to chat? Sa skorkami gastiami vi uspelig pogovarit. Turkas nieskokimi. Okay, there's that variant nieskorka, you may remember, means a few, and that, that word nieskorka acts just like skorka, right? It's nieskorkimi would mean with few, with a few, or with several. Uh, now, a similar adjective, at least similar in meaning, is nekatori, right? Very useful. It means certain, a certain whatever, or some people, certain people, or whatever. It can also mean a few. Nekatori dumash to ete nepravda, right? A few people, certain people, some people think that this isn't true. And again, this this is an adjective. It always acts, acts, acts as an adjective. В некоторых древних русских городах есть Кремль, right? In certain ancient Russian cities, or in some, in a few Russian cities, there is a Kremlin. Okay, so for example, literally, on how many languages do you speak? На скольких языках вы говорите? Answer, I speak several languages. Literally, again, on several languages, язык is treated as a non-noun. That'll be на нескольких языках. Number two, when I have no друзей, no I regularly enough search as Turka, and we're going to get instrumental plural, right? I I meet regularly only with a few of them or with some of them. So snyekaturimi, right? We just need instrumental plural of the adjective. Ya regularly enough search as Turka snyekaturimi is nyek ochin jal, right? What a pity. Number three, the uh, the professor tell is telling about or tells about so many writers that I've gotten them all confused. I can't keep them straight. Okay, so we, we basically need a 
a prepositional plural form of storka, which acts just like skorka, right? Uh, storka is the demonstrative equivalent of skorka, right? So skorka asks the question, how many? Storka shows how many, right? So many, this many. He talks about so many writers. That'll be Profesor Raskazavet a storkich pisatilich stoyach siechuja priputo. I've gotten them all mixed up. All right, so that does it for our case ending. So again, a major milestone. Throw, throw a little party, invite your friends over, uh, impress them with your Russian case endings. And tomorrow we'll set off in a new direction. We'll talk a bit about motion verbs and we'll uh, soon introduce prefix verbs in motion. We're going to do sort of a soft introduction to that topic. It's a major topic and we're going to cover it in great detail in books uh, three and four down the road. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, until next time, до свидания, товарищи. Вперед к новым победам.